Amen. God is good, and uh, we're going to lay hands on and uh, set in Quentin and Chelsea. So you two would like to come. Quentin, Chelsea, you come. We'll bring your kids up here in a minute afterwards for a nice little picture. Amen. Right here, guys. I'm very proud of you all. Very, very proud of you all. And uh, so we're going we're gonna to lay hands on you. But I'm just going to speak for just a couple of minutes, and I'm going to allow Pastor Jimmy and Marty to come and speak for a couple of minutes. And... That would have been over, wouldn't it? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> I want to read you a verse out of Acts chapter 12 and then Acts chapter 13. In Acts chapter 12, verse 25, And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry. And they also took with them John, whose surname was Mark. So they come back from fulfilling their ministry. And so what this word ministry is, is their service to the kingdom or service to the apostles. Most people don't realize Paul and Barnabas, they were errand boys. They would run things to and from different churches for the apostles. They learned so much in about 14 years about ministry. But they returned one, ba one day back, and it says they had returned from fulfilling their ministry. And today, as Quentin and Chelsea stand before you, they have fulfilled this aspect of their life. But then in chapter 13, it says, Now in the church that was in Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers uh, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, we've just come out of a 21-day fast, and we've been ministering to the Lord, serving the Lord, praying, and uh, I told the Joneses I'm going to set them in at the end of the fast. It's good to do that when the Lord speaks to you by the Holy Spirit to set people in. And then this is what it says. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, this wasn't Terry's idea. This wasn't Quentin's idea. This wasn't our apostle's idea. This was the Holy Spirit's idea. When the Holy Spirit speaks, you obey him. And there's timing for everything. I, my initial thought was I'm going to set them in right the week before he starts his church. And the Holy Spirit said, no, I want you to set them in at the end of the fast. And so I said, okay, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me, to me, to the Holy Spirit, not to unto themselves. To me, for the work to which I have called them. There's a difference here. At the end of chapter 12, it says they have fulfilled their ministry. And then in Acts chapter 13, it says for the work. The, those are two different words in the Greek. The ministry is the serving, kind of like a deacon, the diakonos. But the word work is an office. It's where you would find like a profession or a career. It's like... It's his own entrepreneurship type. That's what that word work means. It's totally different. So when you step out right from serving like a deacon to now this is your own work. In other words, here's a vision. Here's the plan of God. You are now responsible for this. This is the weight of the ministry of helping people now lies on your shoulders. That's what he was happening with Paul and Barnabas. And it says, separate unto the, to me the, for the work that they had been called to. So God called them. We didn't call him. It was a prophetic leaf in his heart that in Mexico many, many years ago, the, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to Pastor Marty as the overseer, and they had that, com the Holy Spirit said. In verse uh, 3, it says, Then having fasted and prayed and laid on hands on them, they sent them away. So the goal today is to send them away. Kick them out, as you hear me say that. But the, re the reality is if he stays... We're hindered and he's hindered. And uh, so why we're doing this today is because, A, the Holy Spirit said, B, it's in the Bible. We do everything biblically. Not, none of this, I have nothing against with, with seminary, but this going to college doesn't dictate our call. It's the Holy Spirit that does it. You can get your education and you should. But today we're going to lay hands on them and we're going to send them away. And uh, we're going to move from, hey, that's Quentin. Because honor is honor. And he has proven himself to walk in the office. It's like we call Stacy the evangelist. We call Tina the teacher. You call me pastor. You call Pastor Jimmy the apostle. That, that's an office now. And so there's a level of honor that comes with it. He has moved from our midst, at, from Quentin, to Pastor Quentin. That's what today he's doing. It's separating to him, to the work that he called them to. 
I didn't choose this for him. I'm going to be honest with you as a pastor. I'm kind of like selfish because I really don't want them to go. I got great sons, a son and a daughter in the faith, man. They, these people help me so much. And, uh, but today I'm so honored that we get to lay hands on them and send them away and separate them in this moment, a separation to God for the work. And so Pastor Jimmy, if you would come, Pastor Marty, if you would come, Stacy, Chris, and Tina, if you guys would come, I'm just going to, we're going to step down, but sir, you. Hey guys, I'm so honored to be able to see this happen. You know, God has such a great plan, and it's all anointed and planned by Him. It's not planned by man. And so, Quentin, just know you're not going to be perfect. You're not going to have it all together. You're, you most likely will make a few mistakes. But just know that you're anointed. And it's your, your, your uh, shoes that nobody else can fill. You were called to this appointed time. The Bible says we're appointed and approved. But just know that you're anointed. You're anointed preacher of the gospel. And uh, just stay humble. Always listen to your man of God and, and glean from him often. Listen to his tapes. Uh, heed to his counsel. Uh, Apostle Jimmy as a gift to your life. Use those gifts for the for your good and for the ministry. You're gonna do fine, son. It's okay to be, it's okay to admit being a little bit of afraid. You know, just a little bit. <laughs> but just know God trusts you and that's why he called you. And Chelsea, you know, I know you're you're more like I don't know. <laughs> I trust you. You're like I was. I didn't think Jimmy, I thought Jimmy lost his mind when, when he wanted to take us out of the secure Baptist church and start a work of the ministry. And I didn't know nothing. But I trusted my man of God in my life. We didn't have what you guys have. Y'all are so blessed. So much more advanced than we were. So just know you can do it. And, uh, Glean, I would tell you to listen to Nancy Dufresne above everybody else. As a pastor, as a pastor's wife, as a woman of God, uh, to support her man. She really knows how to do that. I love you, and I'm very proud of you. Amen. I just had a scripture for you here in Romans 1, um, 10 and 11. It says, I always in my prayer making request." Now at last, by the will of God, that I may succeed in coming to you. For I long to see you, that I may impart spiritual gifts that will make you established. You know, what's going to happen today when Pastor Terry lays hands on you? Spiritual gifts is going to activate. They're in your life, but they're going to activate in the supernatural. And I asked the Lord, what did you want me to tell him? He said three things. Don't ever touch the tithe. Don't ever quench the spirit and missions. I've had people ask me, how did you succeed in your ministry? Having a fifth grade reading average. I said, it's simple. Missions, the tithe, and the power of God. And God told me, if you ever stop preaching or praying or prophesying in tongues, I'll shut your doors. So those three things, he can confirm that. We never touch the tithe. All my people, the leaders, we made sure they were tithers. And uh, we've been speaking in tongues now for 36 years. And uh, mission. So you got to get in those three categories and stay there. Because the enemy will try to say, you need to be quieter on this Holy Ghost stuff. Well, you heard Pastor Terry this morning. He got up there and his opening was, Hula Simple. So we're never going to quench God. But a lot of your spirit-filled churches today, they say it offend the believers that come in, the new ones. But it says in the Bible that it's for them. It ain't for me. It's for the unbeliever that comes in and they say, how did you know that? How did you know this happened in my life? By the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So that's what I have for them. And then I'm going to lay hands on you. Yeah. I have the anointing of healing. I just don't exercise it. Um, 
I've seen a lot of miracles, blind see, cripple walk, and all that, but I didn't focus my ministry on that. I focused it on being grounded. The word is more important than miracles, but miracles will excel your church. Yeah. And you know something that I feel that'll happen? You get somebody around that neighborhood that's crippled or blind or can't hear, and you watch God perform a miracle, your church will just explode because people will want to come like what's happened here. And uh, so. Amen. Amen. Not a, does anybody have a word of God for you? A word of God? Hallelujah. Honor your father and mother, and it will go well with you in the land I'm sending. That's a command in Deuteronomy. And so you're standing here because of that. So it will go well with you. So you have nothing to fear. Your God is with you. And honors open that door. Thank you for being honorable. Amen. Tina, do you have it? Amen. Well, church, stretch forth your hand. Father, we thank you today, God. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you for the power of God. Lord, you said to separate to you, God, Quentin and Chelsea, for the work. So, Lord, as he has been faithful, as he has served graciously in this ministry and, and the leadership team here, God, his pastors, his apostle, Father, I thank you, God, that same honor will be reciprocated to him and his work. God, I thank you for the vision that you have started in his heart, but today, God, comes really clear. Father, the understanding of the vision, understanding of the position, understanding of how to manage this new anointing on his life, God, I thank you for it. I thank you, God, that his mouth is a, in his mouth is the sword of the word of God. And Lord, I thank you, God, that he will see the demonstration the same way Paul did, God. It's not with the eloquence of speech, but the demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, we thank you for speaking. Holy Ghost, thank you for moving. Now we just lay hands on him now and we say be, be set in to that work, that new anointing, that new level of his life. I thank you for it right now, God. I thank you that lives will never be the same. God, I thank you for that increase, increase in his life, increase speedily and swiftly. Lord God, this vision shall come to pass in these last days. I thank you, Father, for it today. I thank you for his faithfulness. I thank you for his obedience and his submission, God. Father, because of that, Lord, you have called him out for such a time as this. Lord, I thank you that, that you pave roads in the wilderness, Lord God, streams in the desert for him, God. I thank you, God, he is not a normal man of God, but he is a supernatural anointed today man of God. And Lord, I thank you he's going to shake the region that you've placed him to today, God. I thank you for it. Father, we release this on him today. We open it up according to Romans 1. We long to see to impart the spiritual gifting. And Lord, we thank you for it now in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you for it right now. Just hold him up there. Hold him up there. Give him your hand. Come on, church. Just pray with us for a minute. God's doing a work. Father, I thank you that the region of New Albany shall be shaken for the power of God. I thank you, God, that there is not a church like Kingdom Church, Father. There is not a church there like Kingdom Church. I thank you for it today. I thank you for that anointing on Chelsea right now, God. Father, as she steps into this with her husband, Father, as she manages her life and her family and the ministry, thank you for newness, God, new visions, new understanding, new clarity, God, to this role that they step into today. Father, we thank you, Father, from the bottoms of her feet to the top of her head, God, that her voice will be used to echo the word of God, echo the anointing that's upon their family, God. I thank you for it today. Great clarity, great clarity, great clarity, God. Lord, the heart of a disciple is upon her, God. Father, her heart is to see people changed and grow in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you for it right now, Jesus. Oramando bocondo. Father, I thank you one more time for what you're doing in Quentin's life. I thank you for it. Lord, all of his needs are met, God. 
Father, swiftly, 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 right there, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Isn't God good? You know, many of you all, this is a ministry produced. Let the Holy Ghost keep going. He's, he's doing what he's doing. But there's many people in here, you have that heart for ministry like this. Stay, stay here. Stay connected and don't wait a long time. Chase it. Chase the ministry, man. Chase Jesus first, but you got to be hungry for what God's called you to to see you get stepped into that. And there's other people that this is getting in your heart right now. I'm telling you, there's some things you need to do on your own. But I'm going to challenge you this. As, as they're ministering to them, this ministry is not a ministry that just kicks people out and doesn't help them. I, I've, I've heard other people start works that they had no support. I think personally that's poor for the kingdom business. Um, and he's part of us. This is Pastor Quentin and Pastor Chelsea Jones of Kingdom Church in New Albany, Indiana. Thank you. It's a good church. Sent them. That's what we're doing. And so just come here, guys. I'm going to just... I know that anointing's still there, and you, you don't even have to listen to a word I'm saying right now, but just, just you can stand right here and just face this congregation because this congregation truly supports you. And so, um, And uh, <clears throat> we're not just sending them by themselves, but we are. We have committed to, um, you know, the Lord, Lord, to whom much is given, much is required. And so we're not just a typical church, and we're building a building, and we, I'm believing for $4 million. I honestly don't even want to go to the bank. I just want God to pay it off. That's what my goal is. And um, then we're going to build a Bible college next August. I mean... Might as well go big, go home. Right? You know, and uh, we're raising up ministers and we're doing things and we're going to plant a church in, in Quentin and Chelsea and New Albany. And well, to do that, it takes money and it takes effort. It takes foot soldiers and prayer warriors. And, and so I committed to him. Whether you help me or not, I'm helping him. And I know you will because you're a great church. But uh, financially, we're going to sow to him. Whether we, we went yesterday and Pastor Jimmy and him went and looked at some buildings and some property. Because we've got to find a building to, to have a church. And um, he has, in the natural, the reality is he has no money to plant a church and take care of his family. No better way to start than have nothing. And it only can be God. Yeah. But uh, I told him, I said, for the at least six months, I'm going to support you. I'm going to pay your rent. I'm going to help you with your utility. He has to put some of his own personal money in. And he knows that. But we as a church are going to help support the work yeah. so he can go preach. And so uh, we've created an opportunity. If you want to partner with him, you can partner with him by giving it to the church and just put Kingdom Church there. He'll operate under our 501c3 for the first year. There's a, we have set things in order and set some things in place to help them. And so you can give to him, and you can put it in the offering market, Kingdom Church. If you have our app, there's a drop-down box uh, that says Kingdom Church, or I don't know what it says, but it says something about Quentin and Chelsea or Kingdom Church. Give to that if you want to give to that. Sow into his personal life. To, and I know him. I know them. I know what they do for me. I don't ask a dime for anybody, but I know what these two do for me personally as their pastor. And I know God's going to reward them. And so we're not only going to just sow, we're also going to go. March the 12th is our inaugural, that's the that launch date. Like we're launching March 12th. And so that day I'll be in Indiana with him that Sunday morning. Stacy will be here preaching. And there will be some people that want to go up with us. You're welcome to go. But he, what I want, this is what I want. You know, I would love for all of you that drive here from New Albany or Indiana or, or Louisville area, go to his church, man. Come to my, you choose you. 
You do you. This is the same DNA flows in him that's in this church. The same DNA will flow in that church that's in this church. It's the same DNA. And so people just have to make their decision. And I get it. You know, you want Terry over Quentin. That's fine. But the reality is, so to see, he said. But the reality is that's a great church and that community. And I know, I know big jo little Josh, I call him little Josh Franklin, his cousin got healed. He was the one that the, the break, and he lives in New Albany. So I told Josh at my house Friday night, was it Friday night after the service, I said, listen, you tell your cousin that he needs to connect with Pastor Quentin. And Pastor Quentin needs to help disciple him and make him his first member of his church and the power of God that, that flowed in his veins and healed his body is a great testimony. So we're going to sow to him. We're going to help pay the rent, pay the utilities. This is what we, Listen, this is not the last time, nor is it ju it's just the first time. Any other church that we plant, we're going to do the same thing because that's our ministry. That's our yes. And here's the deal. God has to take care of that. It's his vision. We just decided to obey it. Not only that, we need foot soldiers. People to knock on doors and hang door hangers before we got we got a plan we're going to be putting that out uh, we need people to go up and help uh, we want Chelsea to sing and Quentin to preach we don't want Quentin to sing he thinks he can sing but that's the echo in the tub <laughs> but we're gonna send up some worship people that have already told me hey I want to help I know there's other people that want to help and go up and take one service on a, a Sunday morning and go have church with them and instead of coming here. I'm not a jealous pastor. I'm a pastor of those who want to be around me, right, and want to help me. If they don't want to, they don't have to. But I, what I'm saying is I don't need you to come hear me. Go hear him. Go to church. And go support this man of God. Amen. And we're going to help create that plan of what does it look like so that it's not it's full one day and empty the next. So we're going to help create that. So are you going to help me do that? Help, help yeah. Quentin and Chelsea do that? Yeah. Amen. That's what, this is the church you're with. Amen. So I love you guys. I'm proud of you. Pastor Quentin Jones. I appreciate you.